Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouse Shock. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. And uh, no Tucker in this one because we are in a two seat vehicle. Though I will find a way to sneak him into this one. Stay tuned for that because we are in the 2023 Nissan Z. This the amazing. Mm -hmm. With these amazing beautiful blue seats. And in this video, I'm behind the wheel yet again because six speed manual she's yet to let me teach her uh one of these days babe one of these days but in this video holly will give you her style impressions her writing impressions and i'll hint to my driving impressions but yeah stay tuned gearhead so here we are in downtown tyler texas we're gonna do this one a little bit in reverse we're gonna do our own wobbly head test without <laughs> tucker with us but uh I, I i will sneak him into this video i am sure of it but before we get onto those Where? <laughs> before we get onto those brick streets i have to ask you what are your thoughts on the exterior design elements of this vehicle I mean, I like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it's necessarily my taste. Okay. But um, it's not offensive. But the the um, I could use a few more curves. I would I say. I mean, I'm looking at some pretty good curves not, right now in okay, the rearview mirror. But mirrors. they're not curves. Uh, they are straight edges. Just, They're very sharp and he, okay, he, so maybe the hips are yeah, curvy. Yeah. But from the but from the front, they are very sharp, very um, which makes it look really cool, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. For the sports car that it is, and just you're asking my opinion. And yes. So a uh, quick sidebar, because <laughs> doing this in reverse, we're already on the brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. Definitely not as harsh as I thought it would be. But it's really? also very much a sports car. It's very much a sports car. I would say after having the Genesis last week, that was a lot. Yeah, yeah. We, I wasn't prepared, quite prepared. We, we were spoiled a bit with that Genesis last week. But, How uh, could you not be? But yeah. I mean, that's what, th th that's what you're signing up for when you get a sports yeah. car. Yeah, okay, it anyway. It is what it is. So back to exterior styling. Uh, sorry to sidebar the conversation, but what do you think of the face that is perhaps the most controversial element of this one everyone says it's got a gaping mouth up front okay so i mean i didn't want to be like the naysayer the negative one but you agree i agree it's kind of like <laughs> but you gotta have the pointy look uh, 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 uh. <laughs> But, yes. but hey, if you're going fast in a car, that may be the face you're making. <laughs> <laughs> it may be the face you're making if uh, I, that's I really true. got to open this one up. But uh, something yeah, tells that me... that would be the face I was yeah. making. I'd probably be making this face. <laughs> probably. Uh, we're definitely getting some good screen grab uh, <laughs> shots for my social media to promote this video for sure. But yeah, it looks better in person than it does in photographs i will say that because there are a couple different elements inside that big open grill that give it some distinguishing mm. dimension but yes a uh, big open gaping mouth on the front of this one i haven't seen i haven't seen pictures of it so i cannot compare but but i mean like i said i it, it's probably not if i was designing a car not the way i would make it look but I, they, they it were, is a nice looking sports car regardless. they were going for a lot of heritage with this vehicle and there is a lot of heritage in the z nameplate and there are a lot of design elements from all the generations of it baked into this one i will say personal opinion this is the best the z has looked since the 300 zx of the 90s which we were kids back then so yeah, no, it's been a minute. It like. It's been a minute since the Z has looked really good. Okay. Exterior. Not that long of a minute. <laughs> uh, moving to the interior, I know you've got some opinions. I definitely have some opinions on the blue leather and suede interior. 
I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, the color isn't my favorite. I know you really like it. Uh -huh. I would probably like a navy better mm -hmm. um, for blue or red. Mm -hmm. But the places that the, and that's just my personal opinion, um, I feel like where they have the color is not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I think it's like just enough of the color to make it interesting and fun, but not like, oh yeah, that's that's some blue. That's colored interior, <laughs> yes. all right. But no, and the different textures I think that are used within the blue, mm -hmm. um, I think help that feeling as well. Yep. That it's it, it's a good mixture. Yep. So, dash design. This is unlike many, if not all, vehicles that we've tested so far. We've got gauges up here. Mm -hmm. We've got air vents in the doors. Mm -hmm. Like, w w what are your thoughts here on design elements? Well, it does kind of feel like a cockpit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the manual gauge clusters mm -hmm. up there. I like that. But then you also have the technology. So see, it's like the best of both worlds. Yeah. And they're actually redundant. So I've got the boost gauge here. There's boost gauge there. Turbo speed means next to nothing. And then a battery voltage meter. So kind of pointless gauges up there. Uh, and I've got this no, digital screen. No, because if that doesn't work, <laughs> you have that. But none of that is a speedometer or anything oh, it's that not. is. I can't tell what it is. Yeah, they're all angled towards me because yeah, I'm the driver. The driver. <laughs> uh, so, begs the question you loved, loved, loved the four cylinder Supra that we had last year. It's been a minute since we've had that one. How do you feel the interior spaciousness compares to what I think was a much tighter cabin in that Supra? Oh, you're talking about the spaciousness? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's more room. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, that Supra definitely had you feeling locked in. Yeah. Uh, and this, this interior feels um, a little bit more luxury and less race car-ish, maybe. I mean, yeah. it does feel, but it feels like, okay, maybe this is the wrong example. But Laid you know the, how you have, like, the Broncos that are, that have, like, the tubes so you could go underwater mm -hmm. and Snorkel. they're rough mm -hmm. and all of that. And then you have, like the Bronco Sport. Mm -hmm. That is fun Bronco, mm -hmm. but meant for someone who doesn't want to who do doesn't all that. typically want to do all that. And they want the on the road fun thing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the feel of the different interiors for me. For the Supra, the Supra would be the more feels kind of like you're sitting in a race car. Yeah. Like a working race car. And this one feels like you're sitting in a more race daily. car made for somebody who wants to use it as a daily driver. I would agree with that. Okay, um, the, this definitely feels more like something I, I would want to live with day in and day out in here. Mm -hmm. um, which brings us to Tucker. So, the Supra had no child seat anchor points in it whatsoever. This one does have a top tether and you can run the seatbelt through it. So let's cut to me installing Tucker's child safety seat in this one, which can be done. Let's get some of his opinions on this one as well. See, I told you I would get Tucker in the car with me and here he is. What do you think, T-Man? Great. Are you excited about this? Yes. So this is a perfect opportunity to bring up the fact that this child seat does have a top tether anchor back in the cargo area. Well, let me just show you what it took to get Tucker's car seat put in place. So unlike the Toyota Supra, which is the main rival of this car, you can actually sort of feasibly put a child safety seat here in the passenger side. That Toyota Supra didn't have lower latches or a top tether, and the Z has one of those two. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, I want to bring forward Tucker's forward facing Graco car seat. You can see, uh, yeah, fits in here rather nicely, but I'm going to feed this strap through for the top tether because that is the one thing the Z actually does have a location for. 
And as far as strapping it down into place, they recommend the seatbelt method going through the back through here. And luckily the doors open plenty wide enough and the vehicle's pretty low. So I can get in and strap this in very easily and nicely. And you gotta make sure and pull it until it is snug and into place, making sure that the seat recline is of the right angle for your car seat, but make sure to snug that into place. But now let's go do that top tether. Coming to the back, you just pop the hatch open through with the external release and the Nissan logo. And you can see way back here, if I lean over and reach, I can get that top tether. I'm actually gonna have to really far extend it because here in the floorboard of the cargo compartment, we do have the Z branded floor mat. So you actually have to peel back two layers. You can see there is your top tether anchor. You can tighten that into place. And I have discovered it's easier to tighten it down if you come over to the side of the vehicle. Now, a few things to note. Nissan does recommend that you have the back seat in its furthest back position and make sure that you adjust the recline accordingly. You may be asking yourself, well, what about airbags? And to that, Nissan has thought of that as well. Coming in here, uh, it is an automatic passenger side airbag with the warning light right here. So if I step in, step on the clutch, start it up, you can see, that airbag is actually off right now. Fortunately, this light does not stay illuminated the entire time you're driving, which is a little disappointing. Have you ever gotten to ride in the front seat before? No. Yeah, so this is pretty cool and pretty different for you, huh? What do you like about this car? That I get to ride up in the front. Yeah, you get to ride up in the front, as long as we make sure that airbag is not turned on but you get to be right here next to me. I'm not used to having you so close to me. That's something else, isn't it? Mm, yes. What do you think about the blue interior in here? Um, I like it. Do you think I because like it? Wh because when uh, my favorite colors is black and blue. Yeah, pretty cool, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yep, and I think that you like the blue. I really love the blue. It is my favorite color. What do you think of the white paint job on this one? I like it. What do you think about how fast this car is? I like it. You like it a lot? Uh-huh. You want to see just how quick it is? Yeah. Well, let's see just how fast this car is. You ready? Uh-huh. What do you think? Wait. <laughs> Pretty fun car, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, this is a, a pretty fun, pretty fast, pretty cool looking car, but I think it's about time to get you back home and we'll switch back to mommy riding in the passenger seat. How about that? Okay. So Tucker absolutely loves it. He thinks it is so fun to ride right next to me. As long as we make sure that passenger side airbag is off, he, he thinks it's the coolest thing. In fact, I do believe that was the first thing he told you about this car was <laughs> there's one row and he gets to sit in it. There's one row. <laughs> but uh, I'm very excited about it. But yeah. you know, speaking of of family vehicles and the size and the spaciousness, there is a lot of room back there for the trunk area, yep. as well as some storage spaces back here that are uh, softly covered. So if you had it's not gonna jiggle if something's back yeah. there, or clank, I guess. And there's a uh, secondary glove box back behind you, as well as one in front of you. That's actually where the owner's manual is, back behind you. You found our second hidden cup holder. Found it, um, and also, that's not very convenient. <laughs> no, no. Um, and also, the size but, of this. Here, uh, now, there you go. <laughs> Help you out there. That's way better. Yeah. But the size of this lid made me, made me think, wow, that's a huge. Yeah. It's I, not. I don't know why they decided to hide <laughs> the cup holder underneath the, the lid because there's really no point in it, but there you go. Two cup holders up front. We have some bottle well, holders in the door. I get it. I get it because I would say the place that gets the dirtiest, the fastest are these cup holders. Plus, it 
leaves me without a place for my elbow. Yeah. So unless you want to bring it forward, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Okay. So uh, that leads us into storage. Some good storage options for a sports car. Again, for sure, for a sports car. Definitely feels a little more roomy in here, more daily livable than the Supra. Yes. Yep. And do you know what this uh, bar is back behind us? To keep your crap from coming forward. <laughs> no, it oh. is uh, to keep the structural rigidity of this car. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know what it would do if I owned this car? Keep your crap. Keep my crap from coming forward. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> as far as luggage space back in the back of this. So this is 6.9 cubic feet of space underneath this rear hatch which is a little bit more than the GR86 that we're currently testing at six and a quarter cubic feet. But the shallowness of this, plus the strut towers back here for the uh, rear suspension really cut into the overall usability of it. I've really just been able to get my largest suitcase right in here with a few small auxiliary bags on the side. Even still with that largest suitcase in here, closing the hatch, you really had to slam it because uh, this will rest on the top of the suitcase. So if that thing is busting at the seams, you're probably not gonna get it back here. So my final question before we pull out the window sticker from the glove box there in front of you is, uh, since this is a six speed manual and you currently do not know how to drive it, is there enough going on positive with this vehicle that would make you want to learn specifically so you could experience this vehicle from the driver's seat. If you're asking me if after this we're going to go learn how to drive a six-speed manual, the answer is no. But it, it's coming. I, it's it coming. does make me want to learn. Okay. okay. It, does it only come in a manual? No. Uh, okay, they so have... no, I don't, it does not make me want to learn. They offer a nine-speed automatic as well, uh, which I have sampled one already on the channel, but uh, six-speed manual is more fun because you can row through the gears. I'll give you more of my opinions on my solo review, which is already up. So, brings me to window sticker. I'm actually going to let you do the duties of pulling it out. There's a stack of them in there. Before you look, before you look, you have to guess, what do you think? This is pretty much maxed out when it comes to options on it. Uh, which I have zero frame of reference on this car. I will give you a little bit. No, don't. Okay. Just okay. let me guess. Okay. 65. No. Okay. The four cylinder Supra we had that wasn't really a direct competitor to this was 48. Um, Supras do obviously get more expensive if you get the turbo six. This one does have a twin turbo V6 under the hood. Mm -hmm. You were in the right direction guessing higher because it mm -hmm. is a performance vehicle. Care to guess again? Do I need to go lower or higher? Lower. Oh. Um, can I do zero dollars like the price is right now? <laughs> All right. Why don't you take a look at there and How see. How about 52? Much closer, okay. much closer. <laughs> okay. So what do you got over there? I do believe we are right here. Uh, 53, 655. So about 54. Yeah. Not once all is said and done. Not bad. It's not bad. But I mean if you're if you're in the market for a sports car, it's not bad. Why are we doing this? <laughs> I had to get one in. <laughs> Didn't you? Guys? Yeah. So at 54, with child seat restraints, is this something that maybe could be part of the family? No, I, I mean, tried. I tried. Okay. <laughs> if we did not have a toddler mm -hmm. and we had expendable income for a fun car, maybe we're going to get a Bronco. <laughs> There you have it. And on that bombshell, if you want to know more from Holly, see some behind the scenes stuff from her, uh, see some other stuff that she's been into, go find her on Instagram and Facebook at Female Consumer. You can find me <laughs> and all that we do on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, 
Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can go read more about this vehicle on gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, and Holly, and Tucker from afar, uh, until next time, gearheads. Bye. Tell me, what do you want to know? Or what do you want to say about this car? Well, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs>